brings us to our presentation. Uh, and next, I'm pleased to uh, introduce Mitch Warren, who has been since 2011, the executive director of the Northeast Corridor Commission. Prior to that, Mitch was senior policy advisor for the US Senate Committee on Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs. Uh, please welcome Mitch and his very interesting presentation for us today. Hey, great, thanks. Appreciate that. And uh, in fact, my my first job in the Senate was for Senator Lautenberg. I, I grew up in Mercer County, so um, love getting a chance to to visit. Hopefully, be able to start doing that more in person again. Um, but have have uh, over my life taken many Amtrak, New Jersey Transit, and SEPTA trains out of the Trenton train station. So. Um, a, a very familiar place. And I appreciate you guys inviting me to talk today about the commission. I have a few slides uh, that I'll go through to give a little background on the commission itself and on the, the Connect NEC 2035 planning exercise that we completed and are, are continuing to, to work on an update. Um, but just the, the first slides just um, a little background on the quarter that I'm sure all of you are very familiar with. Um, if you can go ahead to the first slide. Thanks. Um, you know, you're all familiar with the, the importance of the quarter to the region, you know, pre pandemic, uh, over 2000 trains a day carried over 800,000 passengers a day. Um, that's, that's primarily commuter passengers. Also, uh, quite a few Amtrak passengers there. Um, and the quarter is not everybody under appreciates its complexity. You know, I'm sure that that you're all far more familiar with this than most. But you know, those 2,000 trains a day are operated by eight different commuter agencies. Amtrak operates intercity trains. There are a number of freight railroads that operate trains on the quarter, and there are four different infrastructure owners on the quarter. Uh, so it's a it's a busy important and complex corridor and all those trains are operating over aging infrastructure uh, bridges and tunnels that are well over 100 years old um, where we have a multi-billion dollar state of good repair backlog there hasn't been significant investment in the corridor in most of our lifetimes i mean since since world war ii we've really seen under investment in the corridor since amtrak got it in, in 1976. It's never had the, the funding available to address the state of good repair backlog or, or invest as much as needed to, to not only address state of good repair, but to address some of the capacity needs, some modernization needs, um, reduce the trip times. So Congress has seen that the quarter wasn't on a sustainable path, uh, authorized creation of the Northeast Quarter Commission and if you go to the next slide, I can walk through some of the um, commission members. We have 18 voting members, uh, one appointed by the governor of each of the states from Massachusetts down to the District of Columbia. Uh, Kevin Corbett is our state co-chair. Um, and he and, and all the folks at New Jersey Transit have been, been very engaged in what we're doing, very constructive players. So we really really appreciate that that partnership with with Kevin and Jeremy and, and Joe and, and you know so many others at New Jersey Transit New York MTA also very very engaged as are um, you know all the other surrounding states uh, so we have one from each of the states that's nine voting members on the commission then the next slide shows the other nine voting members we have five appointed by the Secretary of Transportation and Amit Bose the Federal Rail Administrator is the USDOT co-chair with, with Kevin Corbett. And then we have four appointed by the CEO of Amtrak, led by Stephen Gardner, who, as you know, is now CEO of Amtrak and is the, the one remaining original commissioner from when the, the commission's first meeting over 10 years ago. Um, so he's he has a lot of background there, and it's helpful to have somebody who's who's been around from the beginning. So we have 18 voting members, nine from the states, nine representing USDOT and Amtrak. Um, we, if you go to the next slide, when we were created by Congress, we had a, a statutory mandate 
to develop a formula to allocate costs on the corridor. And we spent a number of years in, in pretty intense negotiations developing what started off as a formula became a policy um, with three pillars. And I'll, I'll walk briefly walk through each of those just so you can sort of understand the commission and, and where we're coming from. On the cost sharing, we allocate about 1.3 billion a year in shared operating and normalized replacement capital costs. Uh, so on the operating side, it's things like the um, maintenance of way and dispatching, policing, uh, all shared costs. We allocate it based on usage. And on the normalized replacement capital side, same thing. We we allocate costs for um, for track and and signal systems and electric catenary system, undergrade bridges, the capital renewal work that needs to be, do be done. We have a formula that allocates that based on, on usage, um, based on things like um, gross ton miles and train movements and, and things like that, depending on, on the cost item we're allocating, there's different allocators, but it's always based on, on usage. So that's, that's, the first pillar and a key pillar that that brings in a significant amount of money a year and, and has helped to create some stability to the quarter's um, funding levels. Uh, the second pillar, since that first pillar meant a lot of um, agencies are going to be investing more money in the Northeast quarter, they wanted to make sure that they had a, a more of a partnership with with Amtrak in the decision making, more transparency, more accountability more collaborations. So we do a, an annual five-year capital plan um, that we've, we're continuing to try and improve and, and make more collaborative. Uh, we do an annual report that looks at the operating performance on the quarter that looks at the implementation of the one-year capital plan. Um, I will talk in a, in a few minutes about the longer term planning exercise that we have undertaken, which is, has taken on increased significance with the passage of the infrastructure bill. And the, the third pillar of this is the need for a federal partnership. It was important to our members who were going to be investing more in the quarter that the federal government also step up and invest more, that the you know the states on their own aren't going to be able to address this, this very significant state of good repair backlog significant need for improvement um, capacity needs in the corridor they needed a federal partner to do that um, and, and fortunately with the infrastructure bill um, and i'll get to that in a little bit but uh, you know we now do have a great partnership on its way with with the federal government um, the next slide talks about uh shows just background on the, the connect nec 2035 planning effort that we've undertaken um, some of you probably remember the NEC future um, planning exercise. It was a multi-year exercise led by the Federal Railroad Administration. That was a tier one EIS. And that was really a, a long-term vision for the future of the corridor. Um, what we have done with Connect NEC 2035 is try and develop the first phase of NEC future, focused on the first 15 years. What can we achieve? in the next 15 years. And that was more of a, a ground up, um, you know, project level based uh, planning approach. And if you go to the next slide, you know, we really focused on um, looking at track outages and, and sequencing projects. One of the significant limitations for investing money in the quarter, obviously the biggest has always been money and Workforce is, is, as it turns out, a significant one as well, but you know, a significant um, limitation to investment is getting track time. And it's such a busy corridor. And, and even now, we're, we're, most of the agencies are back to you know, close to pre-pandemic service levels. Um, so you know, even the ridership is still down some. The, the, most of the train movements are back. And it's it's very busy. It's hard to get track time, and that limits even with unlimited funding. There's only so much you can invest in the quarter each year, because you have to take tracks out of service, which 
disrupts trains, causes canceled trains, late trains, you know, very frustrating to, to customers, even though it's, it's obviously in, in the long run is going to make the service better and more reliable. Uh, so what we looked at was how can you most effectively sequence this so that we can make the maximum productivity out of each track outage to make sure that, you know, sometimes now if there's not enough planning, you might take a track out of service for a certain period of time. And then two years later, it's out of service again to do something different because maybe the commuter agency had work it had to do and it wasn't coordinated with the work Amtrak had to do. And so you have multiple track outages where you could have all done it at the same time. So we're trying to, um, by coordinating all this planning, making sure that the track outages uh, are maximizing the impact, um, maximizing the productivity, minimizing the service impacts of each of these track outages. So that was an important factor in, in Connect NEC 2035. If you go to the next slide, we uh, released that last summer, had a press conference at Moynihan Train Hall, which was the first time I had been there since it opened, um, you know, beautiful place. Um, to announce this with, with a number of our members. Um, Kevin Corbett was there, um, Stephen Gardner from Amtrak, um, Amit Bose, Nuria Fernandez, others from FRA, from New York, uh, Joe Gelletti from Connecticut. Um, we introduced this and it's a long-term plan. We really focused on state of good repair. Um, the biggest benefits are gonna be reliability. Uh, but there's also going to be trip time benefits. We're going to see new capacity, which is going to allow us over over time. It's going to take some time to increase the frequency of of train service as well. Um, so the, the next slide shows the importance of modernizing the infrastructure. We do an annual report each year and we look at what's causing the delays um, on the quarter each year. And you can see consistently infrastructure failures are the number one cause of delays on the quarter. And it's gonna take time, that's not gonna be fixed overnight. It's gonna take years, but as we replace these aging bridges, bridges and tunnels, as we renew the track infrastructure, the modernize the signal systems, the electric catenary system, we're gonna see significant um, reliability improvements. So we're going to see some pain in the in the near term as there are more track outages to address this. And that's some of the, the planning work that we're doing with all the agencies to figure out the best way to do that. But we are going to see, um, we are expecting to see significant reliability improvements over the years as we modernize the corridor. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, get a chance to talk about the infrastructure bill. And all of this, has been, you know, these have been planning exercise based on no money, right? It's it's demonstrating what funding is needed, but there's never been any any funding, any significant funding um, for the quarter. We Congress has been more generous over the past ten years or so. There has been more consistent funding, and how you know, I'm sure many of you remember, 15, 20, 25 years ago, Amtrak was always on the brink of bankruptcy, and it, you know, really had no money, no capital dollars to do a proactive capital investment. That's changed over the years. It hasn't been nearly enough, but um, over the past five to 10 years, it's been much better. Uh, this infrastructure bill is, is a game changer. And just, we have some highlights of some of the programs here. The, the most important ones, a federal state partnership program that has approximately 24 billion over five years for the quarter. Uh, it's a lot of money. It's not enough to do everything that needs to be done over the next 15 years, but it's an important start. Amtrak has $6 billion for their Northeast quarter account. And then there are other programs that, that may have um, grant opportunities for the Northeast quarter. Uh, the Chrissy program, the CIG program out of FTA, which is funding the, the Hudson Tunnels and the Portal Bridge. There's this new mega program for, for major infrastructure projects. Uh, there's the RAISE program. There's, there's other programs that may um, potentially have some funding opportunities for the Northeast Corridor. Um, so that's going to be a, a significant uh, opportunity over the next uh, number of years for all of our members to go after dollars to actually move these 
these projects forward. And, and if you go to the next slide, as a result of the infrastructure bill and, and the money that's now out there, um, you know, that's, that's changed everything. We did C-35 not knowing there was going to be an infrastructure bill. Our, our timing was very fortunate, and we were able to show Congress the need. Um, and so C-35 was, there was no funding when we did it. It was, we're trying to show the need. Um, and we, we didn't constrain it by funding. We didn't constrain it by workforce. We did take a cut at constraining it by track outage needs. So as a result of the infrastructure bill, the um, federal state partnership program requires the Federal Railroad Administration to do, to create a, a Northeast Quarter project inventory. And then that project inventory will inform the grants that the Federal Railroad Administration gives out uh, once agencies apply um, for, um, for the dollars that are provided annually through the um, Fed State Partnership Program. So we realize that we're going to have to do an update of our plan um, so that the FRA has the latest information available in order to create its project inventory and, and give out its grants. So we're in the process of working on a C-35 update, trying to take a look at the challenges posed by the need to ramp up the workforce. You know, we're not going to be able to do all the work that we'd like to do because it's going to take time for all these agencies that have been underfunded for so many years, particularly Amtrak, to ramp up the size of its workforce, both the labor and management sides. Um, that's a significant endeavor, and we're still trying to figure out you know, what's the best estimate of, of how long that will take and, and what does that mean for the the project list going forward. So we're going to update our delivery analysis, try and constrain it by, by workforce needs, at least to the best of our ability this year. And then next year in C-37, um, which our plan has been to do these updates every two years, in C-37 we'll have even better information and we'll again take a cut at, at further constraining by, by workforce ramp up and, and project readiness and, and funding needs and everything. So. Uh, we are in the process now of, of updating this plan. That's a 2022 endeavor. In 2023, we will work on C-37 and, and the next iteration. Um, the update is, is more of an internal document. It'll be used to inform FRA. We're not going to do C-35. We have a, a big report that we put out, um, which is on our website. Uh, we're not planning the same big report for the C-35 update. We'll do that again for, for C-37. And if you go to the next slide, um, the well, here's just shows you where where the information is available on our website. Um, so that's a, a quick introduction to the Northeast Quarter Commission, uh, to the uh, Connect NEC planning process that is ongoing.